Hello lads, ladies, gents, ladders, whoever, whatever, welcome back to another video. Some of you out there lost your dad to the ultimate evil, a lack of milk in the house. Not me though. I love my dad. My dad's f***ing awesome. But no matter how bad it may seem, at least you aren't poor Kazuya Mishima. Oh, All of you! Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? His father, Hayachi, has tried to kill him multiple times. As their game of yeet each other into the volcano went back and forth, at some point in 1996 and 1997, Tekken 3 hit the home console and arcade market respectively. Being the third in the series, you would expect nothing less than an improvement on what had already come prior, and Tekken 3 did not disappoint. Improving in practically every aspect, Tekken 3 solidified itself as one of the greatest fighting games to ever be made, selling an outstanding 14.5 million copies. The developer and publisher Namco were probably laughing their way to the bank. Now, this might seem like I'm saying the game is kind of crap, but it's not. It's good. It's really good. I want you to change your name to Delta So Good Drum. Closer to Virtual Fighter than something like Street Fighter, Tekken is one of, if not, the single largest 3D fighting franchise in existence, with only Soul Calibur coming close. Tekken is a fighter that will take some getting used to if you're used to 2D fighters like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Marvel vs. Capcom, Dragon Ball Fighter Z or Fighters, and many others. The first two Tekken games are definitely a bit of a slog, no pun intended, compared to the third especially. Mainly due to their somewhat slow and more methodical combos and movement, 3 sped things up just a little bit and made things a little more fluid. All of a sudden, the movement felt way more responsive and combos felt more reliable, minus those 23 hit combos, because my dumbass can't make those happen on a good day. But simple combos felt pretty doable, even for people like myself who aren't super adept at fighting games. But if you struggle with combos, you can always play a character like Eddie Gordo if you're a little b there is a lot to cover with this absolutely insane lore, characters, and the mechanics. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not the most adept at fighting games in the world, so this won't be the most in-depth look into fighting mechanics you can get. But I will try my best. Just don't expect this combo is plus X amount of frames or anything of that kind of nature. Before jumping into that stuff, though, I do want to talk about the game's different gameplay modes. We do have our arcade, which is the traditional way of getting the story. We also have a survival mode, time attack mode, Tekken ball mode, and Tekken force mode. Each of these modes is pretty unique. Time attack is basically arcade, however. Survival, as the box says, survive as long as you can. Tekken Ball is a fun volleyball-like game, which is really addictive. And Tekken Force is something like Streets of Rage. Taking place 15 years post Tekken 2, Tekken 3 follows the adventures of 21 different characters and how they all interact with each other throughout their participation at the King of Iron Fist tournament. Everyone has their own goals and backstories. Some of them are definitely a little weaker than others. I think they fit the aesthetic of the characters and it all kind of makes sense even if it is a little bit silly. I feel Namco did a good enough job in making sure it made sense as to why everyone was here. Granted it's a little bit of a MacGuffin in order to have everyone show up but money does work. I'm a man that believes in one simple divinity. The almighty dollar. It is clear, however, characters like Jin and Haihachi are definitely main characters, whereas someone like Paul and Ling Xiaoyu are a little bit to do with the side, even though they do play major parts within the overall lore of Tekken. For what it's worth, the Mishima family have a very complicated backstory. Now, I'm not actually going to go into the entire backstory, because we could be here all day as I try to explain why they keep trying to kill each other, the origins of the Devil Gene, and things of that nature. You have to understand there are quite a lot of games, and it's a very complicated complicated story. It's like trying to explain Kingdom Hearts, but this is the fighting game equivalent. If you do want to hear me talk about the lore of Tekken and the Devil Gene and everything to do with the Mishima family, let me know below and I'll gladly make a follow-up video down the line because I love Tekken and I will gladly play all the games again just to make that video. Beyond all the story and characters which make the game interesting to pick up, we need to cover the mechanics which makes it hard to put down. And yes, I'm very proud of myself for that line. <laughs> yeah, boy. As mentioned earlier, Tekken is a 3D fighter. This means we have full movement in any direction. On paper, it sounds like it'd be awful to deal with since you could just run in a 360 degree circle and avoid everything. But that's not exactly how it works. Even though, yes, technically we can go anywhere, we're soft locked into a 2D line against our opponents. It doesn't mean we can't get out of it, but it just means we're not going to be swinging and missing constantly. We can use short dashes to try to avoid getting hit. You will still get hit by things even when you feel 
feel you get out of the way. It's not a flawless system. Beyond all this, we have our usual shenanigans when it comes to a fighting game. We can walk, run, punch, kick, jump, duck, dodge, block, and everything else in between. Just remember the five Ds of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. On paper, up until this point, Tekken as a series, when you look at it as a whole, hasn't done anything to really stand out from its peers. And yes, you would be right, it is a fighting game, and not even the most original one at that. However, when you play it, you know it's something special. There is a reason why this game continues to thrive to this day. The series as a whole is more popular than ever. You'll notice going from 1 to 2 to 3, the drastic improvements in presentation. Given the short turnaround cycle between these games, it's really impressive how far these games came. From their general character design, the fluidity of the animations, the wonderful stages, Tekken 3, up until this point, was by far the best looking Tekken game. Having 15 different stages, feeling pretty much every character's feel and aesthetic, Tekken 3 has a wonderful variety to keep you engaged while you make your way through the arcade mode, if that's all you wanted to do. Another area where Tekken 3 excels compared to the previous two games in the series is its OST. The soundtrack is something special. It separates each character as they all have unique music as well as the locations. They fit everyone and everything to a T. Having a very industrial, grungy and heavy theme overall, Tekken 3 really fits the mid-90s feel. It is important to note though there is a different soundtrack for the PlayStation 1 and the arcade. Both of these soundtracks are absolutely amazing and I have easily spent days listening to them both on repeat. Although having many composers, it definitely wasn't a situation of too many chefs in the kitchen. And in no particular order I'm going to read their names, however I do apologise because I will probably mispronounce. We have Hiroyoku Kawada, Nobayoshi Sano, Kaichi Okabe, Yoshi Awakawa, Hideki Tobeta, and Minamo Takahashi. They did an incredible job with this soundtrack, and I think it stands out today as one of the greatest that was ever made. Now up to this point, I've basically done nothing but praise the game, but this is the one downside that I have when it comes to Tekken 3, and that is the game's balance. And this is only because the game is from the era in which it is. If it was a more modern title, I don't think I'd have this problem since I'd be able to patch it and make things more balanced and fair. You'll notice that some characters have abilities that seem super powered. Someone like my personal favourite Paul has that punch that can do just insane damage. Basically able to one hit just about anybody. Not exactly, but it feels like it. Now if you're versing someone else who knows what they're doing, or even the AI, they might be able to dodge it. But if you're versing someone who isn't used to the game, you're probably going to be able to use it to win pretty much every fight, and it's not going to be a fun time. This is just from personal experience, but I think it's more important to be able to enjoy playing games with friends and family, like your dad who hasn't come back with the milk yet. Jennings for three. Lamb looked like he had a touch, but it goes to Wade. He has Arroyo in front. So with that, lads, ladies, gents, ladettes, whoever, whatever, that brings us to the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed this video on Tekken 3. I had a blast making it. I know it's a little more silly compared to other review retrospective sort of dealios that I've done, but um, I don't know. I just... I had a lot of fun making this one and had silly jokes pop into my head as I was going. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like. If you want to share your stories with Tekken 3, let me know down below. Uh, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe out there. Bye.